Hello and welcome to. Oh, I forgot. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Is this happening? This is really happening right now. Hello and welcome to the coding train. I'm looking in front of me and seeing a light on over here and three lights that I forgot to turn on. And actually, about 30 seconds ago, I forgot to put the mic on and I'm just scrambling to put the mic on. Let me go turn those lights on. Enjoy some music. Here I am, turning on light number two. Turning on light number three. Turning on light number four. Oh, it's brighter in here now. How lovely. Ah, <sighs> all right, now I'm really here and I am wearing my fancy new Team Trees sweatshirt. Strangely enough, these trees seem to be purple. Also, I... Something strange is going on. But if you would like to see what this sweatshirt really looks like, I will come over here. Oh boy, it's bright. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I fixed the settings on this camera, but eh, I apparently did not. Welcome. Uh, if you're new here, maybe you came for the trees. Um, this is the coding train. Where I, a person, has signed a contract to every time I say the word train, I have to blow a ridiculous train whistle. It's my lot in life. But really, I come here on Fridays and other days, and sometimes not at all, <laughs> to live stream uh, coding tutorials and coding challenges and fun creative projects to make with code and basically also waste a lot of time with a lot of nonsense. If you're really more interested in just uh, um, coding tutorials, <laughs> I might tell you to go refer to some of the videos in my playlist, which are uh, on my channel, which are in playlists and edited together a little bit more succinctly for learning to code. But today, I am here to do a special live stream as part of this um, YouTube fundraiser that's happening today called Team Trees. Um, any money donated as part of the fundraiser will go to the National Arbor Foundation. The goal is to raise $20 million. Every dollar goes to plant a tree. There's lots of information about this online at Team Trees. And a special thank you to today's uh, sponsor of the live stream, Brilliant.org. Um, I will come back. Brilliant.org is a wonderful website with lots of fun interactive challenges and learning puzzles and courses. In the middle of the live stream, I will do uh, the Today's Daily Challenge. Um, thank you for their sponsorship of today's live stream. I am donating the uh, brilliant sponsorship fee to the National Arbor Foundation for today's live stream. Um, OK, I said train whistle. Simon is fact checking me and said, uh, <laughs> I said train whistle, but not did not blow the train whistle. <laughs> All right, I will. Um, by the way, I have a level in here now. We can see if I am level. Am I level? Ah, ah, oh no, don't break the level. Wait, what happens if the level has more than one bubble in it now? No, it's back to one bubble. Uh, hi, Dan. Hey, Dan. Uh, thank you, TMC, who donated five bucks. I do see a quick um, notification pop up when somebody donates, but I don't, if I don't look quickly, they seem to go away. I should open up a page which shows me that. Uh, um, Lennart Gassler donated five uh, euros, I believe that's the unit of measurement, <laughs> to the National Arbor Day Foundation. Thank you very much. <coughs> Ding and train whistle. <coughs> and Alibibis writes, hey Dan, this is my first stream. Yay, welcome. Uh, congrats on gaining a level, Dan. What did I gain? How did I gain a level? What level did I gain? I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about what I'm going to code today. And maybe I think it probably makes the most sense for me to just jump right into it. I mean, you know. But 
in case you, this is your first live stream and have never been here before, I think I better just clue people into what this channel really is like. <clears throat> and often what I like to do is read, helps me relax, helps me get my mind set to think about coding and algorithms and all that stuff by reading from my favorite book, <clears throat> A Million Random Digits with 100,000 Normal Deviates. Still looking for a first edition and complete copy of this book. Hard to find. 64,161, 3,748, 73,025. Doesn't feel like this is the right moment to read these numbers. The one you have now, the level. Still don't know what that means. Oh, the level! <laughs> oh, I'm the worst. I'm so bad that I use corny, sad trombone sound effects. That's literally what I have become in my life. A person who wears a green sweatshirt that's see-through, plays sad trombone sounds, live streaming on YouTube while, and this is the part that I'm happy about actually, reading random numbers. 90,835, 91,843, 54,343, 27,897, 43,866, 12,812, 55,093, 87,489, 28,783, 42,434, 47,972, 83,302, 7,668, 93,477, 92,548, 54,622. 4,338, 66,021, 55,551, 94,318, 93,391. <laughs> the music is very loud. Okay, thanks for letting me, oh yeah, mm, no, it's at the same level it's always been. Maybe the lullaby sound is a little louder. I will turn it down a little bit. Boink, boink. <laughs> oh, 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 Shamil Nkosi asks, what's the book about? Okay, uh, let me just, I, I think maybe you didn't get it, so I, I better read another section. 58,956. <laughs> 77,949, 65,228, 95,469. <coughs> Random numbers, six million. Um, I, um, um, I'm gonna move on because apparently there's 425 people watching right now. So um, I'm, I'm kind of on a path and I have all these projects that I would like to, and by the way, when I keep looking over here, it's because I got multiple chats and feeds and things telling me stuff about what's happening in the live stream, but I'm gonna focus on you, the viewer, and talk to you for a minute. I have a lot of plans. I have a lot of topics I wanna attempt and cover and videos that I wanna make, and I'm having a lot of trouble getting to them because every week I'm distracted by some thing that I thought of or somebody told me about that I thought I would try. And this is one of those weeks. Um, I'm, I'm teaching a course called Introduction to Machine Learning for the Creative Arts, and most of that course does not have video tutorials associated with it, and I really would like to get that up and running and fill that out. But I'm here because I'm going to revisit something that I have wanted to do for years that I've never found the time to do, and I'm going to do it as a coding challenge today for Team Trees, for the Team Trees fundraiser. So that is, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, back in time, to days of yore, a long, long time ago, all the way to Coding Challenge. We're now on Coding Challenge number 152, which is kind of insane. This is live stream number 187. Apparently, I've been doing this for quite a while now, which is kind of nuts. But I'm going to go all the way back, scroll, scroll, hopefully you're not getting seasick, to Coding Challenge number 15. Can I get there? Where am I? 43? Oh, so many coding challenges. Coding challenge number one was Starfield. We're going to find number 15 because that will form the basis of what I want to do. So what I want to, what I, I have already done everything I could possibly think of 
near something to do a tree pose. Is that like a yoga thing? <clears throat> Which is good. I need to do more yoga to stretch. Um, so I have already done every possible algorithmic tree <laughs> fractal thing that I could think of. I have a coding challenge on just fractal trees with recursion, making it object oriented to put some leaves at the end of the tree. I did an L system. I did the like space walk. That's not what it is. Space colonization <laughs> algorithm. Um, I've done a bunch, so many. Yeah, space colonization, 3D fractal trees, L system. I was like on a whole tree kick. If only I had known this team trees, we'd be planting trees here in 2019. I could have not done any of these. And I could just redo them today, but I've done them before. And so, ah, and David's reminding me, yes, I do want to show the RDP contributions. I'm it's kind of getting to the community contributions thing. So this is what I want to start with. Um, um, I want to start with making uh, the object-oriented fractal trees, because the thing that I said, I definitely must have said in one of these videos, is I would like to look at, or I propose this as a challenge to a viewer, to add physics to the tree. So you can draw the pattern of the tree recursively. Um, that's what's happening if I go here. right? We can just see this is a recursive tree, and it's just unfurling all at once. But there's none of the information about the tree is retained. It's just sort of like a stamp onto the canvas. Um, I could also, uh, how do I go, wait, whoa, whoa, here, if I do this, by this website, oh no, wrong way. <laughs> this website is awesome. <laughs> um, I could go to this one, and this one, I can't remember, do I have it grow? Ooh, is it broken? <gasps> is it broken? Oh no, oh no, I press, <laughs> I click. <laughs> So I could actually have the tree grow slowly over time, and I could add some leaves that fall. So this is actually now retaining information about the parts of the tree, um, where they are, and placing a shape at the end. I, this is what I want to build on. So this is what I need to maybe have the tree sway in the wind or something like that. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and there's some other tree challenges that do um, other things. So uh, what I thought I would do, and this, uh, this one would be an interesting one to try as well, but let's start with this one. And what I wanted to do was look at some of the tree community contributions. But since I recently released a coding challenge, RDP, <laughs> Raymer Douglas Poiker algorithm, you know, it's a topic that everybody was just dying for me to do. Most, uh, but um, that I could, uh, maybe I, should, I would like to show those community contributions. So let's start off with doing that. Uh, if you are wondering how to submit your own community contribution, there's, an, you, this, there's this link here and also see how. You can do it for any coding challenge, coding challenge number one from a long time ago you could do. It's getting warm in here and this is wearing a sweatshirt. Might not be able to wear the sweatshirt the whole live stream. Um, there's a, a explanation of how it works here uh, along with a video tutorial because that's the thing that I do, <laughs> apparently make video tutorials. Um, let's look at these community contributions that came in. Raymer Douglas Poiker algorithm in 3D using P5JS. Let's take a look at that one. Whoa, that's wild. So I think we're seeing it play out over time where the line, line optimization or iterative line optimization is maybe called per make the leaves blow with wind per noise. Um, um, so that's pretty interesting to see this 3D curve or path being um, iteratively simplified by removing excess points. That's wonderful. I'm kind of amazed that the WebGL engine in P5 works um, well enough for you to make something like this, which is wonderful. Uh, thank you for that. Um, let's take a look at this GPS route data swift for iPhone. This is going to take me to a YouTube video, which might not be the easiest thing for me to just watch right now, but why not? So this is a Swift app, uh, maybe looking at a path. Uh, and then, yeah, so this is, a, this is definitely one of the applications of the algorithm, which is to look at, maybe look at geo, geodata, um, chart a path through uh, lat long points, and then uh, simplify that path by removing excess points, that kind of thing. That's pretty interesting. No, oh, cancel. I thought I had autoplay off here. Um, hey, look, there's this live stream with five, oh, it's a fundraiser. Look at all this new stuff going on on YouTube today. Uh, let's take a look at, Oh, seriously? Oh, yes. So this was actually pointed out in one of the comments that, oh, it would have made sense to combine RDP with your earlier Fourier drawing videos because you could 
um, kind of take the user drawn, um, the user drawing from made from the mouse and uh, optimized it. And it looks like David Snyder uh, did the very best. So let's take a look at this. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna draw something. I'm gonna draw a tree. <laughs> What's gonna be? Uh, <laughs> because this is how trees look. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, all right. And so one of the interesting things about you doing this with um, <laughs> I see your comment, Nathan, about my messing up with autoplay. Don't think I don't see it. Um, one of the nice thing, one of the interesting things that's happening here is by reducing the points, the speed of the Fourier uh, visualization is suddenly so fast because it's tied. The actual rotation speed and the number of uh, epicycles is tied to the number of points. So maybe there's a way to massage that in some way to even with fewer points to slow it down. Or I'm not so sure. Uh, but that would be something to consider, I would say. Um, and then RDP scaling fidelity to plot y-axis lines. Okay, modus art. I don't know. I don't think I looked at this one. <gasps> Whoa! Does this have sound? It feels like it should have sound. This should have sound. I don't know what sound it should have. Breaking news. Coding train breaking news. It kind of like feels like a little like breaking news. Sometimes I just like lose myself in my thoughts while I'm live streaming. It's getting warm in here. The air, they did fix the air. And in fact, when I walked in here, it was 68 degrees, which is way too cool. But I, I was happy with that because uh, it gets warm as I'm in here for a while. But eh, the sweatshirt thing is making it feel um, quite... Um, Quite warm. <laughs> All right, uh, synth wave music, yeah. I, I agree. Um, thank you for this, these are beautiful. I, I can't tell you how much joy it brings me to see people's variations of the coding challenges and the coding examples and sharing them. And I hope that um, I'm doing a, uh, the best job that I can in sharing those back with the community and allowing people to engage with each other and um, be creative. So if you have ideas and things that I could think about to do a better job, um, let me know. I will also mention that um, 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 I am taking steps to um, be better about having um, merging contributions and uh, bringing in more people to work on the GitHub repos. Um, I will note that if you're looking for something to get started with, is it still technically Hacktoberfest? If you still need to get some pull requests for your features. Um, uh, pull requests for your features. I just m started speaking words that make no sense. If you're still looking to get a number of pull requests for your t-shirt, <laughs> Hacktoberfest t-shirt, um, you could contribute to the Coding Train website. And in particular, I will note, um, Act, adding backlog of guest tutorials, even tagged Hacktoberfest. So Violet Craze, um, they are working to help me keep the GitHub repos up to date and managed. And so um, Violet is there, along with many other members of the community, to help you out if you want to try contributing to the website. One of the things that Violet is looking at is what videos don't have a corresponding web page where people might want to share their versions, um, even ones from years ago. And so this is uh, an issue that uh, talks about how you can get involved with filling some of those in on the website if you're looking for you know, a, a kind of getting started working with GitHub and an open source project kind of thing. Um, and David says, you forgot to remind me about the Mora contributions. Right! Oh, thank you, actually. You didn't forget because you just reminded me, and this is the last thing I'm going to do before I start the coding challenge today, a chroma tree. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Welcome to my chroma tree. Um, so what I want to say is if one thing you'll notice which is new on the website is you can also go, I definitely need like, I don't have the cabana music, Mathieu. <laughs> What's the cabana music you've been using? I should at least add that to my soundboard, but probably this is the closest. Um, you can go. What am I even saying? I don't need to play music from my soundboard. I am a very poor amateur ukulele player. 
who happens to have a very out of tune ukulele that I forgot to tune before I started. But we can go to the cabana. And if I go to the cabana, there is one cabana video from my series Coding in the Cabana, where I code a visualization of the Mora Rose. If you haven't seen this, I don't know, maybe you might enjoy it. It kind of fits with the Team Trees theme. You could go check it out. Um, and now you can also, uh, because we have this page, and maybe if anybody wants to contribute some ideas for how to make this look different, more like you're in the cabana. Um, Um, you can now add your own versions, and maybe soon I have a second Coding in the Cabana video coming out. I should warn you all who hated the chalkboard that the chalkboard makes one more appearance. <laughs> we did, Machit did some excellent work to sort of reduce the amount of uh, chalk sounds, but the chalkboard will be no more. One more time with the chalkboard. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go watch this video. You'll know pretty quickly. Um, let's look at the Mara Rose with UI. Uh, ooh, oh, whoa, so this is, we can, oh, what is, draw outline, oh, cool. I didn't even look at these, somehow I missed these. Loop the drawing, ooh, loop N and D, oh my god, so many options, this is totally fun. You can change the color, color picker, I don't even know how to do that. Um, great work, this is fun. So you can try, one of the, the thing about this is you can try, of different values for the variables that determine the Mora Rose pattern. Uh, so let's try four, you know, 72. It's, it's just fun to like see what happens with all these different values. I mean, algorithms and graphics, it's like chocolate and peanut butter, right? They just, it's so nice. <clears throat> all right, thank you for that, uh, David. And, oh wait, <laughs> once again, you know, so people, people of the internet, it's the, I, I thank you to those of you who are so dedicated to the coding train and always are submitting your contributions, but if you're out there and you're thinking, I don't want to put mine, it's not very good, I don't know what I'm doing, no, please, I, I encourage you, submit your version, it, you made it, it is beautiful. Um, don't be, uh, just, just come and join, and I would love to feature it on the coding train. All right, 3D more rows, radius as seven. 3D more, whoa. Okay, wow. That's kind of nuts. Uh, and so I can do the same thing here. Well, uh, whoa, whoa, this is wild. Great work, I love seeing this. This is just with P5 WebGL. Amazing, we should look at the code for this. So how do you do this in P5? <laughs> Animated rows, oh, there must be like another JavaScript file. I'll look at this on my own time. <laughs> Logic, whoa, okay. I'll be, I guess you can just use vertex, begin shape vertex with XYZ points. This did like years ago, this didn't, this didn't uh, work. Amazing, uh, all right. Um, now let's go to more rows link to scroll. This one I did see. I remember it's quite lovely. This is a code pen. A rose by any other name. Let's do a nice dramatic reading of this. Oh Romeo, oh Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. You can see why I failed as an actor. I mean, I didn't actually try, but I would have failed. And thus, I'm a weird internet person who does coding tutorials. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. This could also use some music. It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any part belonging to a man, O be so other name. Oh look, so I didn't even notice this. As I'm scrolling, this is animating. I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have put the ridiculous music to it because it's quite beautiful. So that's really interesting that this is like an, oh, kind of a unique idea to have some sort of content, a text scroll, scrolling it um, and um, have the animation for the scroll be some algorithmic or generative art.
I love that. All right. I think we're ready now. Well, let's go. What I wanted to do is let's go back and look at um, maybe some of the, so let's see, I, I sort of have a memory of maybe somebody doing a physics tree. So let's look at both of these and see if there is one. My version of object-oriented fractals creating a forest randomly. Um, ooh, oh cool. So look at this. <coughs> Got to get up to 21 million. Um, interactive CC, whoa, Cinder version, that's super nice. Um, let's go back to the original recursive tree. Oh, wrong one. Um, just because there might be more um, pink fractal forest. We can look at these. Whoa, that's lovely. Look at this. Got some leaves on it. Pink fractal forest. You had me at pink. Very nice. Uh, fractal forest. Oh, that's lovely. Look at these beautiful scenes of fractal trees and dynamically customizable implementation in Java. Oh, uh, I'm always afraid to click on YouTube videos. Oh, that's me. Oh, this is me. Lots of people watch that video. In two Wait, when was that? This is, where, how did I? Oh, that was just in the um, GitHub, sorry. Welcome to another coding challenge. This was May 30th, 2016. Over three years ago? Look, okay, <clears throat> let me show you something. Brown, just nice, be can you see? Can you see what's happened to me in three years? Can you see? Can you see that? <clears throat> I am very distinguished, I suppose. Okay, <laughs> oh boy, that's really disturbing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, go away, go away, go away, go away. <clears throat> All right, so, Let's get started by building upon the fractal trees object oriented. So I'm going to go to the challenge. I'm going to do, let's try. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this. All right, I am back. Sorry about that, everybody. As always, I always forget oh. this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this. So, um, usually I use uh, rechargeable batteries, which is what I just put in the mic. But there was somebody else had used the bar of this mic and had put batteries in it, and so I was just letting those finish, <laughs> which I probably shouldn't have done, knowing that I was gonna live stream. But I don't wanna waste it. So, thus, uh, I guess you have not realized that I'm back, but you will soon enough. Oh. 
this dot song, this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, all right. So I've got the old challenge here running in the browser. I've got my Chrome developer tools um, open. And I've got my code open here. I'm not 100% sure about this font size. It seems a little small. Is it OK? Should I make it a little bigger? Did I change it? Editor font size. Let's just try like 32, I feel like, is what I usually do. That feels better to me. It's, um, so I'm going to stick with that. All right, now, before I start the coding challenge, I'm going to update this. This was written so long ago. Oh, it was walking through the snow to chop down the tree for the paper to write the code on. <clears throat> and then I typed var back in the day. That was the way to name a variable. So I'm going to change this. I know it should be const. I know it should be const. I'm just not a const kind of person. So I'm going to change all these to let. Maybe I, maybe I should be. Maybe I will become a const person for today. All right, that looks good. All right. I'm gonna, I want to update this for ES6, basically. And here, oh, now talk about ancient technology. Constructor function. I'm going to change these to ES6 classes. This is really exciting for you to watch, I'm sure. Um, and we could probably write some interesting regular expression or script to automatically do this. But what I'm doing is, what's wrong? What did I get wrong? It should like auto format. Ah, I guess it just still. Um, these are the functions. Um, I'm going to change these to let. This is another function. Whoops. Get rid of this. Okay, there we go. We've got the branch class is now a class, and Control D multi select based on next occurrence. Yeah, there's actually I think I saw some Visual Studio Code plugin or script that will actually update your old constructor function syntax to ES6 classes, but. You know, I, I find it soothing sometimes to do the manual tedium of like just changing everything, changing a variable name manually. It's, I'm a, I'm, maybe I'm like, a, well, it's very clear that I'm kind of a weirdo. But I don't know, maybe that's a very normal thing. Maybe you might find some peace in your life by instead of worrying about finding some script to automate stuff, just manually taking your time. Um, all right, let's make sure this still works. Too much nonsense here. Um, hold on. I'm going to do this because I'm just going to go grab, I would like just to go grab um, this, which is, I don't need the, I might use the DOM library, I might use the sound library, but I sort of feel like taking those off. Um, I've got version 9, and then I also need uh, branch.js. Um, and so now, Oh, it's looking for style.css, which I'm not using. All right, so we're good, and I have um, updated my code for EF, EF, ES6. Um, Mr. McGum uh, asks, why is var bad? Var's not bad. Var, I love you. You were, you were good. I still use you sometimes. I see you on code examples, and it makes me, I feel something. Um, but var is a, um, I would say, somewhat deprecated way of declaring a variable. And if you would like to know more about that, may I suggest watching my video? Let versus var. It's supposed to like fly in and then show you a little clip of it. I don't understand why that doesn't happen if I don't have like some kind of just say it. It usually happens. Oh, oh, right, right, live, live, live. <clears throat> Okay, 
Boy, it's been 30. Remember how I said I was going to get started really quickly? It's been 35 minutes. <laughs> okay, but now I'm really going to get started. I think, though, I'm going to make a couple more adjustments. I don't feel like I need to step through built the tree each time in mouse pressed. So um, this is doing, this is weird. Let me, uh, let me say, let me get rid of mouse pressed. And then um, let me see what happens here. So that's just going to do the beginning of the tree. But I want to do this some amount of times, like this. And then, um, tree. And I think I'm going to get rid of the leaves. They're not really, I mean, the leaves would be an interesting thing to add back in, but it's kind of not the point of what I'm doing. So I'm going to do n iterations. There we go. Uh, six, let's see what it looks like with seven. Right, you can see if I do 12, whoops. There we go, that's kind of nice. All right, so we see that this works. Uh, happy little trees. Yeah, you know, I don't, people make the boss Rob, Bob Rob, Bob, boss Rob, boss Rob. Just call me boss Rob from now on. <laughs> people make the Bob Ross um, uh, reference and I very much appreciate it. I am a huge Bob Ross fan myself. I don't know that it's so accurate. <laughs> Bob Ross is a, was a, is a, soothing, calming, wonderful presence, uh, lots of artistic talent and thoughtfulness. I think that I'm just a hyper frenetic weirdo who's coding on YouTube. It's kind of not the same thing. <coughs> um, world record beard growth. It's Movember, not yet, almost Movember. All right. I think I don't want to have, it, I like how it looks this way, but I'm going to uh, reduce that. It's Coding Train, sponsored by Brilliant Water, brilliant.org. OK. Um, OK. So I think I'm ready to get started. And um, I, I sort of feel like today might be a day of not editing this later into a coding challenge, but <laughs> I don't know why I think that, but I think I'll act like it is <laughs> because just in case this, this is like this amazing, we just have this like hour of total perfect zin zone zen happy tree making, um, we might as well uh, give ourselves the opportunity to make that into a nice little package that somebody could find more easily than watching this live stream nonsense. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, let's see what else we need. I think we're good. I should show you, by the way, just to tease something else that's coming soon on the coding train. I have some more props. I mean, this is a little bit, this might find, might find this disturbing, this strange uh, unicorn. But uh, also, it's just that it's got green. Oh, my goodness. This is really going to be a problem. Mathieu is not going to like editing this whiteboard. <laughs> um, I wonder, just give me a second here. Um, um, I actually have a remote control app. What's the chance that that's going to allow me to fix this camera right now? Oh, I'm still connected. OK, OK, OK. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to do something very exciting, which is I'm going to control this camera from this uh, remote control app. And I think maybe what I want is to turn the ISO down. Is that better? Better? I think that's better now. OK. I think that's the best thing to do. Unfortunately, I still, so I have these like Sony cameras, and um, I'm having trouble with the white balance. I'll show you. Right now it's on automatic white balance, which makes things a problem. But I can't seem to figure out, like, this is like some of the other settings. Like, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that's better. Warm white, is that better? These are like automatic settings. 
I like this one that's like if it's cloudy outside. <laughs> so I'm just going to, or daylight, which it's not in here. I'm just going to go back to auto. All right. Turn it one more ISO down. I think I did already. Um, so hopefully you can tell me I'm going to leave it like this right now. Um, <clears throat> but the reason why I have so much trouble with these cameras because I have them mounted on the wall, which means I can't see the menu. I have a confidence monitor so I can see what it's seeing, but because I want clean HDMI out, I can't see the menu on the confidence monitor. One of these days I'll have a perfect, at least they don't go to sleep after 30 minutes. They only go to sleep after they overheat. <sighs> Auto is fine. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go, everybody. One more ISO down. That was at 510. All right. I'll do one more ISO down. Um. OK. ISO, it's at, it's at 640 right now, 500, okay? How's that? I think that's going to be good. This is going to have to be good enough. I don't know how much I'm going to use the whiteboard. Okay, hopefully that helped. All right, we really, I really got to get, you know, I procrastinate because I'm afraid. This is, this is very much something that I have not done before uh, and did not practice for this. I have used, I've made a fractal tree before, and I've used the physics library that I intend to use, which is uh, toxiclibs.js. So let me open that up. Um, and is there a CDN for it? I just forgot, but it's fine. I'll download it if I need to. Um, and also, let's see if I can find this. A project that I want to reference is Skittish Tree by Martin Bravo. Um, I think this is it. Yeah, Skittish Tree 2011. I think there's a nice document. Um, let, me, let me add Martin uh, Bravo's name here. because I feel like it was on, this is from the spring show, but there was a nice uh, video of it. Let's um, I just, I'm looking for it was made as a video installation. Um, I guess I'll just, this will, this will work. Oh, Paley Center. This is what I'm looking for. I want to show you this project. So this is called Skittish Tree. Uh, it's a project made by uh, Martin Bravo, um, and uh, it's an interactive project where the tree kind of has physics and responds to you. And you can see that it's like sort of like adding appendages and being very skittish. So this is kind of like what I hope to accomplish, um, to create a tree structure that e each connection is, has a spring-like connection to it. Um, and I think it's responding to sound, if I remember correctly. This actually isn't the video I was looking for, but um, that's fine. There was an installation that was on of this project that was on uh, like in a store window. That's that's the memory of uh, this video that I had. Thank you, Ruts Nays Thirty Two, for donating to the National Arbor Day Foundation. And it is time for us to finally make some trees. Here we go. And maybe, all right, I, yeah, okay. Here we go. So I'm going to act like this is going to get edited later into Coding Challenge, and maybe it will, maybe it won't. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to a special Team Trees Coding Challenge. In today's Coding Challenge, well, I guess I'm going to say, could you make the trunk thicker? Yes, all these things are possible. Hold on, just wait. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to a special team. Tr <laughs> 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 
Hello and welcome to a coding challenge. Uh, this is a special coding challenge. It is a fundraiser for the Team Trees initiative. Um, you can look at the find the donate button and make a donation to the National Arbor Day Foundation to plant the goal with the goal of planting 20 million trees, one dollar per tree. So please join me in this initiative and help plant a tree. And for, for what I'm gonna do, I, I made a lot of coding challenges that have to do with algorithmic trees and plants and various things. And this is from coding challenge number 15, object-oriented fractal tree. This is the result of it. I'm going to build upon this code and attempt to add physics to it so that the tree can sway and wobble in the wind. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to go terribly wrong, and, and, but maybe you'll learn something and be inspired to make your own algorithmic tree and to perhaps, hope even better, plant a tree or donate some money to help plant a tree. Uh, the physics library that I'm going to use is called toxiclibs.js. So toxiclibs.js is actually a port of a library called toxiclibs made by Karsten Schmidt, uh, AKA Toxi. It was a processing library that I used to use mm, a lot and is um, featured in my Nature of Code book. And this is a JavaScript uh, version of it. It has lots of features, but the feature that I want to use from it is called Verlet physics or ver, ver, verlet, <laughs> verlet physics. What I'm looking for right here is 2D physics simulation. Can I click on that? That's not a thing to click on. So um, thank you to, uh, so uh, Toxic Libs, just to um, note, Toxic Libs was originally written by Karsten Schmidt for processing. I mentioned that and ported to JavaScript by Kyle Phillips. Haptic data on Twitter. So say thank you to haptic data on Twitter. Um, how do I get it? <laughs> Getting started. Um, is it, is it, it's available through NPM, which means um, I should know how to do this, but can I use like a uh, toxic lives? Okay, oh, that's examples. The website, mm, one package. Is this the, the library? No. That's, this is the examples. I mean, I could just download it, but I'm being, Stubborn. Toxic libs JS. There we go. Um, so there must be a way now. Somebody will tell me I can use that like un, unpackage.com slash something. <laughs> It'll just like automatically take me to it, right? Does this do it? No. No one will tell me. Nobody will tell me. Okay, uh, NPM, oh wait, I know how to do this. Uh, ML5, I can, since ML5 does this, right? Uh, it should work the same. If I do unpackage.com slash, well, let's see, toxic libs zero, what was the um, version? That was the latest, 0.3.3, 0 0.3.3, 3. Uh, 0 0.3.3, .3, and then it's probably just called, let's see what happens if I do this. Ah! Um, in top right. <laughs> that doesn't help me. Version 0.3.3, 3. Um, let's see. Cloudfair, oh, it's on Cloudfair? Uh, 0 0.1.3. No, but that seems like an old version. All right, we'll try uh, cdnjs dot cloud fair. Okay, bit dot ly slash two or uh, two j two j m l e o g. Too, too many E's. Too many E's, Mozart. Too many E's. Nope. It's just a mirror. Womp womp. Uh, <laughs> bit.ly bit.ly slash <laughs> 2 J M L E O G. That doesn't work. From terminal npm install toxic libs. Plus JS. 
<laughs> oh, this is going so well so far. No, I don't want to do npm install. I'm avoiding doing npm install on purpose. Gosh darn it. <coughs> Toxic lives. .js, that's what I forgot. No. No, just no dot. Ta-da! That seems weird, though. Oh, no, but I want to do uh, toxiclives.js. <laughs> JS deliver. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Violet saves the day. Thank you, Violet. Uh, www.js deliver.com slash package slash npm slash toxic libs js. There we go. And actually, all I want is physics 2D. I don't know that I need, um, um, I don't need the, I, don't, I probably need util and geometry. So, whoa, whoa. Okay, this is helping me sort of. Um, how do I get a link? I just want a link. <laughs> download. I guess I could just download it. I'm stubborn. I refuse to download it. It's hosted via a CDN. Um, different versions. Copy to clipboard. Copy URL. Oh, I see. Uh, great. Oh, this is not. This is not going well. There's no built version of the package. That's crazy. Wait, there's not 1.8k viewers. What? Wait, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm. Gonna, I'm not. You know what? I'm no longer gonna be stubborn. Why are all these people watching? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the coding train. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna code stuff, I swear. I don't just sit here and do nothing, read random numbers. I'm sweaty, very sweaty, very sweaty. There's no built package. It's okay, everybody. I know how to deal with this. I'm gonna go to my uh, nature of code examples where um, I keep a built version of the library, uh, which is, um, here, NOC examples, P5JS, uh, <laughs> libraries, uh, toxic libs. Um, do I have like a toxic libs helper thing? Let's see. Uh, simple spring, libraries, toxic libs. Okay. I'm just going to use this. I'm just going to download this version of the library. I'm going to have it local. I have a built version. Look, it's version 0.3.3. Thank you, Kyle Phillips. Apparently, I've never had this many people watching a live stream before, and I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. I, <laughs> I'm going to hit raw. I think I should do like a probably a beginner tutorial or something. Uh, not this. Uh, fractal tree physics. Uh, we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call it libraries. I'm going to get to the coding, everybody. I'm going to do something. I'm going to be. I'm going to do meaningful stuff here. I'm taking this very seriously all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, I don't. There's the, I made this Toxic Libs helper thing for the Nature of Code book. Um, wh where am I? I, like, I don't even remember where I was. Uh, uh, how's that? How come that's gone? I was on that page. Um, somebody must have like tweeted or something. Uh, examples. I don't think. Mm, let me get that helper. Let me see what's in that helper thing. So for the Nature of Code book, which um, uh, for the examples, I also made an extra file called Toxic Helper. Um, oh, it doesn't really do anything. You know what? It, all it does is do make aliases to the classes I want to use um, so that every time I want to make like a gravity behavior or an attraction behavior, I don't have to write toxy.physics.2d. So this is actually useful. So I will also save this, and I will put this in libraries, and then can close all this stuff. I can go back to the code and let's add these other libraries like 
I have like all my notifications on Do Not Disturb, so uh, I'm going to go to Toxic Libs JS and uh, what is it called? <laughs> Toxic Helper uh, .js. Then I'm going to hit refresh. It doesn't find it because I made a folder called libraries. So one of the unfortunate things about the way that I'm working right now is, and I, if I were, um, if I had a better setup, I would probably do like a picture in picture type thing, but I have to switch back and forth between the browser view and the code view. Um, I just lost like 100 viewers, which is no surprise. Like a whole bunch of people came being like, somebody clearly told them like, hey, go check this out. Team Treats, National Library Day Foundation, woohoo. And then everybody came and like, okay, there's a very strange person just jammering on and like searching for like a file that doesn't exist and just not refusing to give up. That's me. I also like to read from my book, a million random digits with 100,000 100, normal deviates. <clears throat> point, negative point 0.92, point 0.602, also negative, 1.017, point 0.509, point 0.664, point 0.917, point 0.310, point 0.168. Whew. Okay, I feel better. I feel better now. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, I could have used the, I could have JS delivered those GitHub links. I know, I know, but I would have had to figure that out and that would have taken me a while. So, where was I? In this thing that's definitely getting edited later. <laughs> I went ahead and downloaded the files toxiclibs and toxichelper.js. Those are uh, built version, um, ToxicLibs.js is a built version of the library that I'm using a local copy of, and ToxicHelper.js is a JavaScript file that has um, <laughs> Toxic Helper is a JavaScript file that I created for uh, my examples from the Nature of Code book that aliases some of the classes that I want to use from the Toxic Libs library. So what is the next step here? I have this code. This code creates this idea of a branch. A branch, a branch is an object that has two points, A and B. And by definition, a branch, and I really did not draw this in a way that makes any sense. A branch is an object that has two points, A, which is a vector x, y, and B, which is another vector x, y. So this is B, and this is A. Then I choose to draw a line between those two points. After that, each branch gives birth, so to speak, or uh, to two branches that are connected from its point B. It becomes the point A for those two new branches. Those get Bs, and so on and so forth. This is the process of recursion. This idea of a function, or in this case an object, being defined according to itself. A branch, by definition, is a line connected to two other branches. And those two other branches, by definition, are lines connected to two other branches. And those are lines connected to two other branches, and so on and so forth. And by iterating over this list of branch objects and then drawing them in the window, I have this particular pattern. But it is a static pattern. It is a static pattern. It does not move. It does not animate. I have just basically calculated all of these points and drawn lines. So what I want to attempt to do in this coding challenge is say, in addition to a branch being a line between two points, each point is going to be what's called a particle, or in this case, a verlet particle, verlet particle, 2D. That's the technical term in the Toxic Libs library. So all of these are particles, and this particular line is a spring connection. So a spring is a, you know, as a uh, entity uh, that, that is a connection, a joint. Uh, what are some other words for that? An edge, joint, connection. What's um, in matter.js? I could oh, I could use matter.js. Maybe I should have used matter.js. 
Whatever, I'm using toxic libs. Why not? You, the viewer, will go make a version of this with matter.js after. But it is a connection that has a bunch of properties, like rest length, at what, what is its length at which it will come to rest, right? Um, as well as a property called k, uh, the spring constant. Um, and that will, all, by playing around with these values, I'll get various amounts of springiness and uh, elasticity to these connections. All right. Um, all right, so let's attempt <laughs> to do this. I don't remember how to do toxic libs. Wouldn't it be nice if there was like a tutorial for it somewhere? Uh, Natureofcode.com, read now, physics library, uh, toxic libs. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look here. So the first thing that I need to do, it looks like, is make a physics world. So I'm gonna create a variable. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, physics, and in setup, I'm going to say physics equals new verlet physics 2D. I think I need to say 2D. I, I can check by going into my libraries here, verlet physics 2D. So you can see this is what the helper does. <laughs> Maybe this is a bad idea. I don't know. Uh, just puts these uh, class names in the global uh, space. Global namespace. Okay, so I've made a physics world. Um, I can do things like set the world's bounds. That might be a, that's probably important for me to do. Uh, maybe, I, let's do that, why not? So let's uh, do this. Um, so, uh, and this, I think this will still work. I'm creating a rectangle that is defined by the canvas. So the boundaries of this world are the canvas itself. Um, uh, I'm not going to call physics.update right now because I actually don't want to update the physics. I just want to get the building blocks in place and slowly turn them on to see what happens. So what I want to do is create a Verlet particle 2D for every one of these points. So how does this work? How does my branch object work? I have a beginning and an end. So those, when I make those, they are, I call create vector. Ah, so what I'm doing to create the first, the root of the tree, if I come back over here, the root of the tree is a branch that connects these two starting points. And right there, there it is. Root equals branch between those two points. I think what I want to do is change those points to make them verlet particles. So instead of a plain P5 vector, I'm going to make them a verlet particle 2D and a verlet particle 2D. Now that's going to break everything because all of the math and everything that I'm doing in this entire example <laughs> depends on those two points being vectors, P5 vectors. Now they're verlet particles 2D. So I could like run the code and see where the first error I get is. This dot set weight is not a function. What? Um, so let's go to sketch.js line 13. What? That's weird. Wait, there's an error on this line? Oh, oh! Ugh. Guess what I forgot? I forgot the new keyword. I am making an object. I am calling the constructor of the Verlet Particle 2D class. I must say new. New? New. Now let me refresh again. Now this is good. This is what I wanted to see happen. dir.mult is not a function. Why is it not a function? Well, what is dir? What is mult? So let's go look for branch.js line 21. And here, interestingly enough, it was fine with p5. Oh, it, weird. Weird. So ah, this is very uncomfortable. I think if I recall correctly, I have something in my book that addresses what I want to talk about. Did not mean to be referring to this so much. Um, there was like a table, like vector table thing um, that I, uh, no, no, 
All right, I'm going to not scroll forever and like drive you all insane. Um, let, me, let me talk about what's going on here. So, the original version that I wrote made use of something called a P5 vector. And a P5 vector is a vector, an entity with magnitude and direction, has an x component, a y component, and it has a bunch of math operations. And they're called things like add, subtract, mult for multiply, et cetera, et cetera. Normalize. I have lots of videos on this stuff. I just made it, instead of a P5 vector, a Verlet particle 2D. A Verlet particle 2D is actually an instance of something in Toxic Libs that's called a VEC 2D. Guess what a VEC 2D is? It's a simple vector. But it's not P5 vec P5's vector, it's Toxic Libs vector. So my code will all still work just fine if I find the corresponding function in Toxic Libs that corresponds to things like multiply, subtract, add, et cetera. I got to figure out where the documentation is, because I think I got to look all this stuff up. Um. I just lost like 800 viewers, which is kind of hilarious. It's still kind of nuts that I have, there's 1,200 people watching here. But um, all right. Uh, so let me look. What's the best place for me to look at the Toxic Libs documentation? So is it on this website? Uh, getting started, Toxic Libs follows Physics 2D. I know how to find it. Differences from the original. Mm -mm. GitHub, contributors, rent bill. Blah, blah, blah. I know where, I think where I'm going to look, I'm just going to go and look. But uh, Toxic Libs Javadoc, this is crazy what I'm doing. I probably should take a mulligan and go and use, um, and go and use uh, matter.js, but I'm, as you know me, I'm stubborn. So I'm in the, so this, ah! Welcome to the world of Java documentation. Whoa. So I'm looking for, this is the Java, original Java library's documentation. And I'm just going to do the mental gymnastics to translate from that into JavaScript. If you can uh, enjoy, ooh, Ray, ooh, whoa, no! Okay, everything's going to be okay. Just go right past that vec 2D. We can actually go to frames and then, I, oh, boo. Okay, that didn't work. Um, here we go. I'm going to look for add. So where, where, am I, where am I first? P5 vector dot sub. So I think the equivalent of this will be this dot end dot sub this dot begin. Let's take a look at that. Uh, sub. So it subtracts vector v and returns the result as a new vector. That's what I want. So one of the things when working with these vectors, it's a little bit tricky because sometimes you want to adjust the vector you're working with. That's subtract self, like subtract this from myself. But toxic libs, when you call z sub, it makes a new vector, which is not how p5 vector works. Very confusing, I know. But that's OK. Uh, now, rotate. Does it just do that? Does it have a rotate function? Rotate. All right. I guess that works. Uh, multiply. I think it's just M-U-L. I have a memory of it just being M-U-L. Scale. Is it called scale? Scale. No? Whoa. Wait. Yes, 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 yes. It's scale because I'm not. I'm not doing the dot product or vector multiplication. I'm just taking a vector and multiplying it by a scale or a single number. So if you think of a vector, is the, this line represents the vector. If I multiply it by 2, I got that line. If I multiply it by 0.5, I got that line. And what the fractal code is actually doing is each branch is 2 thirds the length of the previous one. Or so I'm scaling it by 0.67. Scale, new end is. This dot end dot add direction. And then I make a new branch. That should work. That should be the same. This is the recursion. I branch out to make a new branch. I only can make two branches. I have branch A and branch B. That is definitely an instance of. I will refactor this 
Uh, but I'm just going to keep going. This is terrible that this is the same duplicate code. But I'm going to do this. Same changes here. Change that. That looks good. Whew. I dare I say that's all I needed to do. <laughs> I got something wrong. I definitely got something wrong. What did I get wrong? Looks like the scaling isn't working properly. Scale, scale. Like, I sort of feel like that's, like, if I comment this out, same result. What did I do wrong? Oh, does it make a new scale self? Scale self. Scale self. I bet you it's that. I don't want to make a new vector that's scaled. I want to scale myself. There we go. So I have now successfully recreated the fractal tree with verlet particles. Uh, all right. So interestingly enough, those are all particles. Let's just test a little weird theory of mine. If I, I think verlet physics in toxic libs will automatically add a default gravity. It might not, but I am going to, um, oh, this is weird. I'm going to take this out. This is drawing a tree. We're going to definitely want to do some jittering and stuff. I'm going to say physics.update. And what I expect to happen, well, what do you think is going to happen? If there's a default gravity, and these are all just particles, and draw a line between them, what's going to happen? I'll give you a minute to think about it. This is like how it works on brilliant.org, by the way. <laughs> you get like a puzzle, I have to think about it, then you give the answer. OK, so the default gravity must not be there. So let's add gravity. And I believe the way that I do that is I say physics.add. I think I have to go back to the nature of code book to look this up. Um, uh, yeah, so let's do it like this. So this is, I can add a behavior to the world, and I can add a gravity behavior, and I can have a vector. This is very confusing, but there's like, this is so what's happening here. So the first thing I do is create a vector. Like, say, like, 0, negative 0.5 or 0 0.5, which is like a vector that points down. So this is the vector, and I want to turn this into a gravity behavior, meaning there's a force on everything pointing down. And then I want to add that to the world, meaning I'll apply that force to all of the particles. Um, so let's actually grab this code and go here. Just put that in here. Whoa, no, wrong code. <laughs> what? I completely copy-pasted the wrong thing. Oh, I'm not even in the right uh, thing. You know what the good news is? Oh, there's no good news for you. I'm just in the wrong camera. I'll, I'll tell you about that later. Got some new recording systems. All right, so let me do this. So I'm going to add this here. Now I'm adding this gravity behavior. And whoops. Ah. Uh, let me just, I think I can give myself a little bit more room here to code. Yeah. I'm adding this gravity behavior. Now let's try this again. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. The tree, the gravity is missing. What did I do? What did I do wrong to you to not have gravity? Gravity behavior 2D? I don't think that's it. It's not defined. Did I not save? No. Hmm. Physics.update, physics.update, oh, oh, no, no, hmm, wait, let's see, hmm, hmm, show, hmm, no, no, hmm, if you're adding two verlet per branch, will two verlets be created, oh, so this is a great point, I'm definitely going to have to fix that, <laughs> update maybe needs a delta time, maybe it does, um, no, I think it does, Hmm. Hmm. Really particle 2D. Hmm. 
Mm. Am I not, what, it could be that the physics is happening, but I'm not drawing it correctly. Mm. Mm. Do I have like a secret no loop in there somewhere? Mm. <laughs> this is very sad. Physics.add behavior. Mm. Right. Console.log frame count. Let's just make sure the loop is happening. The loop is happening. All right, let's be a little bit more debuggy. Let's get rid of all these trees. And let's, let's just make a particle called P. And we'll put it in the middle of the window. And then we will do this. I'm going to draw it, um, point, huh. all right, so this is a good sign. Does it need a delta time? I guess I could give it a delta time. All right, let's go look at my examples. <laughs> Never hurts to look at an example. Oops. Um, where am I going? This is not, this is the book. I want the examples. Uh, libraries. Mm, toxic lives. Let's just look at this one. So I did, do, okay. Oh, you know what? It's weird that it's, oh! No. Mm, no, I don't think. Mm. I think I might know what the problem is. I think I think I know what the problem is. Just hold on, as I'm thinking. But no, but then I did it. It's weird. Uh, let's just look at the sketch. Early physics add behavior. Set world's bounds. Hmm. Um, does, I mean, could, couldn't really be that, like, adding the behavior first makes a difference. Um, oh, oh, weird. You know what? I have this suspicion. I'm making a new Verlet particle by passing in the X and Y. I think Toxic Libs wants me to do this. Why it worked anyway to draw it in the right place? No. That doesn't seem to make a difference. I have to take more drastic measures in a second to make sure my example is actually working. Well, let's make sure this example works. Um, let's go grab this repo. I'm sure I already have, but okay, so the gravity is definitely working in this example. So gravity does work. Add. Jason, trees, tucans, everybody's telling me, everybody's telling me, everybody's telling me, everybody's telling me, everybody's telling me. I know what it is. Everybody relax. I got it. Got it. I got it. If you make a particle, the particle does not live in the world unless you put the particle in the world. If you plant a tree, if you put a seed in the ground, if you do not water it, I don't know what the right metaphor is here. It's not really fitting. But I do need to say physics.add particle, that particle. And then, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. All right, so now what I was expecting to see 
Uh, let's take this out, take this back out. And the whiteboard camera just went off. I don't know why, probably because it's overheating. Put this back in. And what I need to do whenever I make a branch, whenever I make a branch, I need to, where do I make the particles? Interesting. Interesting. New branch. This is weird. There is no, do I never copy? This is weird. Something weird is going on here in that I've only made, this is the only place where I make the particle. And then, here. And then when I make a new branch, oh, this is a problem. So I'm not, this is weird. I'm, the particles are just pointing to each other? I'm so confused. No, this is making a new particle. I see. The end is a new particle. And the beginning is the same particle. So this is actually correct. This is making a new particle here. So hold on, let's just one step at a time. This is confusing because this looks like the only place I'm making a new particle. But let me say uh, physics.addparticle A and physics.addparticle b. And p is not defined because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to just take out the point 0.1, just let it do its default time step. <laughs> Look at that. So only it only fell right there because that's the only particle I added into the physics world. So where are the other particles? The only other time I'm actually making a particle is in this new end. The ref, this is some vector math, and the new branch gets a reference to its current end. It doesn't actually make a new particle. That's very important because I want everything to stay connected. So this, I've actually written the code in a thoughtful way where this will work properly. All I need to do is say physics.addparticle new end, and then right here, physics.addparticle new end. Now let's see what happens. Ooh. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I don't like that. Don't like that. P dot add force is not a function at gravity here. Up. <gasps> oh, it's not a Verlet particle. This has made a vec 2D. So I need to say new Verlet particle. Boy, this was much more complicated than I imagined it would be. Apologies to everybody watching. I need to wrap the end. This is very confusing because what I, Toxiclibs is using, this, this turned out to be a bit of a sophisticated uh, coding challenge, which requires quite a bit of um, facility uh, and experience with object-oriented programming inheritance. Inheritance is a feature of object-oriented programming where objects can pull properties from other objects. And so I made a VEC2D that's not a Verlet particle. A Verlet particle is a VEC2D, but a VEC because it inherits from VEC2D, but a VEC2D is not a Verlet particle. So um, because I made a VEC2D, I need to make it a Verlet particle. And I can do the same thing here. And now I can hit refresh. And there we go. <laughs> that is the weirdest collapsing tree ever. So the, the good news is this is not what I wanted to accomplish. Um, all, um, you know, just having a single gravity force, they all fall at exactly the same rate. I don't want it to fall. I want it to stay standing up. So let's take out that gravity behavior right now. And let's take a look. I have my tree again. Let me also remove the number of iterations. There's too much detail here. Maybe I want ultimately all that detail, but right now it's too much. And I'm about halfway through, so I'm going to take a break um, to talk about uh, Brilliant, the sponsor of today's live stream, and also remind you about Team Trees, kind of like the second sponsor. We've got two sponsors today. Um, but what was I doing? I took that out. Oh, yeah, no, I wanted to change the number of iterations. Let's just go down to six. So I want to work with the physics with fewer points and lines, and then once that's working, maybe I could add more. 
Um, so people are telling me about live server, and I do know, sometimes I do use live server, although very rarely on a live stream, but actually I like to explicitly refresh the browser because sometimes I don't want the change to be seen. I want to change the code and talk about it a little bit and then have it be seen. So I like to have full control over the crashing the server. <sighs> okay. Um, all right. Let me have a little water. Six o'clock. So I want to take a minute. In the, by the way, in the last 40 minutes, I lost 1,000 <laughs> viewers for watching this, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Hi, Elias Um. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, Brilliant.org. Uh, Brilliant.org is a uh, website um, that I really uh, enjoy using. Um, let me show you a bit about the homepage. So becoming great at math, science, and computer science does not have to be dull. Hopefully that's something that you've discovered by watching this particular YouTube channel. Um, I mean, I maybe, I guess, I think probably I'm not dull. I have a lot of faults. I'm dull in many instances, though. You can find me irritating, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, but I'm moving on. But Brilliant, um, it's a problem-solving website with a hands-on approach. It has 60 interactive courses. Um, I like to really show you what all, uh, just all of these courses are. Um, there's one, the, the ones that, I'm, that are particularly most relevant, although all of these are things you could really find as forming the basis of stuff that you might want to code. But there's a computer science fundamentals uh, course there's logic courses, there's number theory, a trigonometry. Oh boy, you really need the trigonometry course if you're watching the coding train. Because have, being comfortable with sine and cosine and tangent and those functions and polar coordinates is really necessary. Um, so um, uh, Brilliant is built for ambitious and curious people who want to excel at problem solving and understand the world. And one of the, th the, th the two things that I love the most about Brilliant, there's many things that I do enjoy, um, if I come back to here for a second and just pull up the website, um, is one is in, in the courses and in the challenges are many ideas for me to try to code things. And I, you know, having done 150 plus coding challenges, I run out of, I've run out of ideas. So there's so much content on Brilliant that I can find lots of new ideas. The other thing that I love is just, um, you know, if I have a little extra time on my hands, I like to do these daily challenges. And this one, I looked at it earlier. I didn't um, uh, solve it, although I, I think I have an idea of how to solve it. Um, let me hold on. I'm, I'm, my view is a little bit off, um, and I think I can take this off right now as well. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so this is today's challenge. And by the way, if you want to follow along with this, go to brilliant.org slash coding train. You can sign up for free. Um, and you can do all the daily challenges for free right there on the website. You can add your own answer. You can add your own explanation. If you want to unlock all of the courses, you can sign up uh, for a premium subscription and you can get a discount uh, by going through that coding train link. The first 200 people will get a 20% discount. Um, so what I like about this challenge is it's like a puzzle. So this is you know, a, little, a nice puzzle. We got a grid here and I need everything in row. Um, let me zoom in on this a little bit more so I can point to it better. I need everything in this top row to add up to six, this first column to add up to four, uh, and so on and so forth. And these are the numbers that I have to work with. So I need to place them somewhere. So if I'm going to solve something like this, first of all, I could just tinker around and try it. That's, that's probably the best way is like to be like, hey, well, I'm, I put a three here. Well, if I put a three here and I put a two here, that's seven. Oh, wait, no, that's no good. Then I would have to put a one here. Ah, but look at this. I just unlocked a little clue to how to solve this. I want to look for things that have only one possibility. It's always a good way to start, right? Here, this column has to add up to six, and I've lost the chat, so let me, ah, sorry about this, everybody. Wrong mouse. Let me pull the chat up. Um, um, <clears throat> so, ah, sorry. So, come back to me, come back to me, puzzle grid. So, the only thing that could go there is a one. So, I'm gonna put this one here. So, like, I'm, oh, come on. Well, look, let's reset. I think I did something like weird. There we go. So you can see this lights up because I've had it add up to six. 
So what else only has one possibility? So 2 plus 1 is 3. To get 7, I could do a bunch of different things. I could do two twos. I could do a 1 and a 3. There's a bunch of ways I could get 7 out of 3 numbers. Uh, here, 2. To get four, okay, I can only put ones here. And this is good because I got to use up my ones. Right? The only possible thing here, there's no way, there's no zero, so I can't put another two. A three would get me to five. So I don't know why I'm having trouble. There we go. I just so what what I like about this is I would love to actually you could make this in P5. So this could be a coding challenge, like make a puzzle generator that has all, I mean, this is really hard to do, all the like, drag and drop and nice little interface and have it be intuitive. Really hard to program this kind of stuff. I would probably make a much you know, cr cr like a more crude version of this that just has, that isn't as thoughtful in terms of user interaction design. But now, now we're getting somewhere. So is there, are there other places where I only have one option? By the way, the reason why I'm looking at this is because the, the question here is how many different ways can this puzzle, puzzle be completed? So the thing is like how many solutions can I find? And if anybody knows, you can, you can say, all right. Uh, um, and, and Simon is reminding me that the, you, you can do the daily challenges for free, and actually the seven latest daily challenges are for free, but the, you need the premium subscription for the archive of them. Thank you, Simon. Simon is like my brilliant sponsor assistant. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, all right, uh, what else here? Um, this is nine. Okay, I think I have to put, to get nine, well, I need a three and a two. Can I put those in any place? So I could put them here. So now I'm just like trying. And then if this is seven, I need a three and a two. And this is five. Oh, no, I did something wrong. Ah, so that doesn't work. Oh, no, 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 I'm fine. What did I just do? Three, right? Because, yeah, a one goes here. And a one goes here. Mm, yeah, I did it. I solved it. So there's one solution. There's at least one solution. Did this in sort of a weird way. Um, what happens? Where was I with this? Um, I'm sure there's a scientific way of doing this. Um, I'm, let me go back to what, this is where I was where I knew these are the only possibilities. Um, so what did, what did I do next? <laughs> I already forgot. Didn't I put like a three and a two? Oh, camera. I should turn the, so apologies for this, the camera. I'm going to turn the fan on, this nice fan to cool down the camera. I can turn it back on. The focus, I might lose the focus. Let's see. I think actually the focus stayed this time. Whatever I did on the camera, it keeps the focus, which is good. Yeah, I'm still in focus, right? I think so. Um, <laughs> I really want to solve this. <laughs> I should just do these in advance. It would make my life much easier. Bottom row, swap the two and the three, people are telling me. Um, wait, hold on. OK, oh, wait, that's what I was doing. Let's, let's do it scientifically. So let's say I put the three and the two here. That's nine. So now I think there's probably only going to be one way for me to do this. My intuition tells me that. Because if I've got to get nine, uh, I need, so if I've got to get seven, I need the, uh, the two, three plus two plus two, what? No, I need the three and the one. The only things I can put here are the three and the one. I can't put the three here. The three has to go here. The one has to go here. Okay. And this is going to get me back to this solution. And now the one has to go here, and the two has to go here. OK. Oh, what? No, 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 no. The two has to go, wait. So maybe there is no solution. If I put the three and the two like this, uh, the focus is no good. <clears throat> Let's check. I have a special way of focusing. That looks pretty good, actually. Did, it's a little bit off. You're right. I fixed it a little bit. Um, wait, OK. That added up to 9. 
So to get to 5, this has to be a 3 and a 2. And I can't put the 3 there because that would already be 6. Okay, so this has to be a 2 and this has to be a 3. No, and this has to be a 1. So then, that's 4, that's 7, that's... All right, so that was a solution with the 3 on the right and the 2 there. So let's take everything off. 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 2. And let's try putting the 3 here and the 2 here. Now can I still get a solution? I need a 2 and a 1 to get to 5. And to get to 7, I need a 3 and a 2. So the 3 can't go here. So the 2 has to go here. The 3 has to go here. And then to get to 7, the 1 goes, uh, to get to 6, the 1 goes here. And, then, and a 1 goes here. Yeah. Okay, there's definitely two solutions. Uh, there's, so there's two solutions. Can I get an, I don't, I think those were the only, so I don't want to belabor this. There's probably a way to make this provable, but I'm pretty sure that as I was solving it, there was no way to go, a, there were no, there was no like branch. This is relates to trees because really what I'm doing is like, are there right here now, there are more than one options I could take. Let's try them both. Maybe one hits a dead end, but I think all the while though, I had to put things in certain places. So I think the answer is two. Um, I'm not going to hit submit just yet. What I'm going to do is I am going to take a little break. Um, um, you, I would ask you to work on this. Uh, sign up for Brilliant.org. Thank you for Brilliant.org for sponsoring the coding train. As today is a fundraiser for Team Trees, I will be donating the sponsorship fee from Brilliant um, to, the, to the Arbor Foundation through the Team Trees initiative. Um, so thank you so much for being for for sponsoring the coding train so that I can uh, participate in this fundraiser and give money as well. So um, I'm going to take a short break for like no more than five minutes. Uh, <laughs> fact check me on this. Sign up for Brilliant.org. Um, make a donation to t at TeamTrees.org or through the donate button that's part of the fundraiser, and I'll be back to finish the coding challenge in about five minutes. So I'm going to mute my microphone. I'm going to mute my microphone and make myself disappear, um, and I'm going to get some water, take a little break, and be back and refreshed.
birthday once again. Here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward Cartesian coordinate song. It's going to be just a few more minutes, everybody. Cartesian coordinate song. Auto-tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. 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 As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, song. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. Song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot. Dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. <laughs> Somebody compose that song for me. Sorry, everybody, now you can hear me. I was saying I took a little bit of a longer break than usual because it got very warm in here. So I um, propped open the door and I turned all the lights out. That's why it looks kind of dark in here. So I'm going to um, <coughs> turn the lights back on. Um, and everyone's saying muted, no sound. You will realize that I have fixed that in a second. Um, the lights are back on. Um, and I'm putting this down here, my keys in my pocket. Um, I am back. And so <clears throat> here I am, and I am here to give this a try. So I was like, keeping an eye on the chat, and there were so many interesting things that people said about this puzzle, how to solve it. Somebody said you could solve it with gradient descent, which I have no idea how that would work. Um, but um, other people were talking about how you can use like a backtracking algorithm, and you're absolutely right. I didn't see a lot of people give me an answer. Um, so I'm just going to hope that my answer, my answer two is correct. Let's see. Here we go. Correct. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much uh, to uh, Brilliant.org. Try Brilliant for free at Brilliant.org slash coding train. You can do the daily challenge. You can post, a, a, you can read about uh, what, actually what I really like 
one of the things I love doing is there's always so many really interesting discussions about how to solve this stuff. I mean, just look at the time people put in to explaining different ways uh, with screenshots and diagrams to solve these puzzles. That is something that I really do love. So I encourage you to put your own there. Sometimes I'll make a P5 sketch and paste it in. That's something you could do. Um, and thank you to Brilliant.org for sponsoring today's fundraiser for Team Trees. Um, the sponsorship fee is being um, donated to the Team Trees uh, fundraiser. So if you feel so inclined, you can make a donation as well. All right. Um, I'm going to, what am I doing here? Turn that off and close this window and we are back. <laughs> we are back to the coding challenge. It is 6.20. Have I been streaming for almost two hours? I think this is going to probably take, if I'm being totally honest, another hour. But hopefully less. Um, hopefully less. So I can close some of this other stuff here. I'm going to leave that open because I might need it. Um, and here we go. <sighs> Was that 100K in an hour? I, so I can't actually see what the tally is, nor can I see how many donations that have come in through this live stream. Can you see that? Um, maybe you can. Maybe if I actually, hold on. If you'll, if you'll humor me for a second, I do have a dashboard here. I used to keep tra a second laptop. You'll notice there's no second laptop anymore. It doesn't even exist. But I do have a monitor over here that I can look at where I'm running Open Broadcast Studio. Um, and if I go over here, if I go to this dashboard, mm, no, I don't see anything. So I'm afraid to press buttons here. I still can't figure out what caused suddenly a thousand more people to join. Um, I, when I was taking my break, I like looked at my phone and started to check like Twitter or like, but I didn't see any kind of notification or share or anything like that. Um, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, David is saying the total tally is 365,000, which is kind of amazing. I mean, I'm a tiny little morsel here. I think there's, there's many, many channels are all releasing videos and participating in this fundraiser today. Um, I believe it was, it's Mr. Beast who uh, started this initiative. I do have a little document that I have here for reference. Um, Team Trees started in May 2019 when the Internet, cha inter internet challenged Mr. Beast to plant 20 million trees to commemorate hitting the 20 million subscriber milestone. Uh, fans then suggested he band together with a bunch of other YouTubers, blah, 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 blah. Um, and the donations are going to the Arbor Day Foundation. Um, they are the longest running tree planting NGO with 47 years of experience and they have the same Charity Navigator rating as the American Ray Red Cross. The donations either through teamtrees.org, that's where I made my donation, or the YouTube donate button, or Arbor Day's Team Trees Facebook fundraiser, uh, are sent directly to the Arbor Day Foundation to fund tree planting. One dollar plants one tree. Um, it, depending on your local laws, uh, it could be a tax-deductible donation. Um, and um, the trees will be planted in a variety of forests on public and private lands in areas of great need. The goal is to plant trees on every continent not named Antarctica. And the Arbor Day Foundation's website, can I get to that? Has a list, I think. I'm looking at a different computer. Uh, computer. So I have a document. I'm not going to read all this to you, but if you have other uh, questions, please go to the Team Trees uh, website. Um, and the Team Trees says it's 1.1 million, maybe because more donations have come through the website itself. Um, all right, so back to the coding. Um, so I'm, um, if anybody knows, I'm just out of, because I'm, you know, you can't, it's very hard to be a person who does YouTube live stream, makes YouTube videos, and not suffer from some amount of vanity. <laughs> And I suffer from a large amount of vanity, probably if I'm being totally honest. And I am quite curious. Um, hold on, I got to talk. Yoloxi, I'm going to get to your question. I am quite curious as to 
if whether there was some kind of mention about the coding train somewhere that sent like a whole bunch of people that then promptly left. And did any of you stay? Maybe you're still here from that, that you never heard of the coding train and you're watching right now. If so, uh, say in the chat. So Yo, Yo Loxie, are you asking about this song? This song is called Tori the Dog, and it is by a composer named Adam Blau. Um, Adam, spelled A-D-A-M, and Blau, spelled B-L-A-U. Adam is an, an old friend from college. He is a film and television composer. I believe he does the music for a lot of different things, but uh, most recently for the FX show, You're the Worst. Um, and this is a, a piece of music he wrote for something else that he lets me use. Adam is the composer for the Coding Train uh, theme song. Um, and so I think you can reach out to him on Twitter, Adam Blau. If, um, I don't think this song is published anywhere. I mean, I have the MP3 file of it right here. That's it. Uh, but maybe uh, you can get in touch to make a MIDI version of it. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Anyone, anyone in the chat? I'm curious. Are you here for the first time? And not just this is your first live stream, but you had never heard of the coding train before today. I'm curious to hear from you. What did you hear? Where did you hear about the coding train? But that aside, I am going to. I still have the fan on. I don't think it's causing too much of a noise problem. So I'm going to move on. Yes, everyone's pointing out Coding Garden with CJ donated $100 to the National Arbor Day Foundation. I mean, if there ever was a channel that aligns with Team Trees in its philosophy, in its design branding, <laughs> it's the Coding Garden. I mean, technically, is a garden where you have a tree. That's more of like a forest. So you might have to be the Coding Forest. But you've got tree growing plants. It's good. And my small little, uh, and, and you can see, nobody knows how to use tree related emojis better than CJ and the Coding Garden. So please check out the Coding Garden. Uh, many, um, many other, uh, 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 CJ streams quite often, at least nowadays. I'm just getting notifications almost every day. There's all these kind of tutorials, especially like back end stuff that I don't do so much. Um, very thoughtful and organized uh, tutorials. Okay, um, and Coding Garden with CJ is in the chat. I'm sure you could ask uh, CJ questions about the channel if you want. And I will now press my choo-choo button and you will know how long the delay is because I just pressed it then and it appeared. All right, <laughs> I'm procrastinating again. I do want to go home, it's Friday. I'm kind of like a bit of a baseball nerd. You know, I don't know, I think I'm, Astros, Nationals, not my teams, but uh, I'm uh, excited to watch the World Series games at eight, so I at least want to get home by then. All right. The next step that I want to try is not just have particles. Oh, sorry, everybody. No signal. Let's turn this back on. Now, let's see if the focus is okay. Should come alive in a second. How's the focus on here? It's probably the, it's, I think it's the same. Does it look good? Yeah, I think it's fine, okay. Um, <clears throat> Instead of just having two particles and drawing a line to visualize the connection between those particles, I want to actually make a physics object that connects them. And the kind of object I'm gonna use is a spring. So I've made many other video tutorials, uh, many other, I have at least one. I've used toxic lip springs in a bunch of other video tutorials to do like a cloth simulation and other things that you could refer to. But basically we've got a spongy elastic connection. When I pull it, I'm stretching it, the force is gonna go back in. When I push it, I'm compressing it and the force is gonna push it back out to its rest length. Where do I want to add the spring? I think it's going to be as simple as every time I make a branch, I need to create a spring that connects the two particles, this dot begin and this dot end. So let me look at one of my old examples where I um, make a spring. Okay. 
So this is some code that I pulled up from one of my Nature of Code examples where I make a, str a spring, a Verlet spring 2D, that connects two particles, P1 and P2. It has a rest length, the length at which it is at rest, and then a strength, or a, maybe that's the, the number for K, the spring constant. I don't know exactly what it means, but I could tune that number up and down to affect its elasticity. We could probably look in the Toxic Lips doc documentation to read exactly what that means, but we'll just tinker around. So I think this should be, um, let me actually just grab this. Um, I should be able to say, make a spring, connect this dot begin, this dot end, and um, the, ooh, what should the rest length be? Well, the rest length should be the distance between the actual length of the, the, the branch, because I'm sort of building the tree at rest, and when I give it a little push, maybe let the branches kind of, I mean, <laughs> trees don't actually have springs in them. So I, don't get me wrong, this is not a realistic simulation. I'm just trying out this idea to make it kind of, to see what happens. Um, so it's a little bit unfortunate that when I make the branch, I do have that distance. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do is, this is, a, this is probably a little redundant and I could optimize later, but I'm just going to calculate the distance by saying the distance between this dot end x and y. So I'm getting the distance between the beginning point and the end point, and then that's the rest length. And the spring constant, I mean, I'm just going to leave it at 0 0.01, since that was in one of my examples. And then I want to say physics.add spring, spring. So let's just see if this at least gives me no errors. Okay, it works. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. What happens if I pull on one of them? What if I just take one of these endpoints and I attach and I move it with the mouse? So you can see in my example, the way that I did this in my example is I'll like lock a particle. I don't know that I need to do this, but I can basically like override its x, y position and set it to the mouse. So if I go into draw, let me just copy this, and I'll do like if mouse is pressed also, um, just to see if the physics is active. Um, I'm going to write here, so tree. Tree is an array that has all of the branches in it. So let me just pull the very last one. Um, I could say, can I say pop? But that's going to actually take it out of the array. I'm just going to access it by tree.length minus 1. So that's the like last, this is the last particle in the tree. And I can say last.lock. Uh, if the mouse is pressed. Let me do exactly this. Set it to the mouse and unlock it. Okay, here we go. This is going to be a little bit nuts. I really have no idea what's going to happen. Which one do we think it is? Is it down here or is it like over here? Let's see. Ooh, last.lock is not a function. Oh, it's a branch. It's a branch. That's an array of branches. I want to take the particle that's at the end. Tree.length.end. The particle is what I want to lock. OK, let's try this. Whoa. Oh, fun times. It's doing kind of, look at that. Whoa. And there we go. <laughs> and this coding challenge is finished. Tree with physics. Mwah. <laughs> it's actually, that's pretty cool. Uh, all right. Hmm. Can I add a dampening force? No, I actually, I honestly have no idea what to do next. I mean, I want to lock the, all right, here's, here's something I actually want to do. Let's lock 
the root, so let's say um, a dot lock. That very first particle should never move. Let's just try that. Right? So there we go. So that's kind of interesting. The tree has no structure to it whatsoever. <laughs> but it's kind of, this is kind of fun. How can I make this feel more tree-like? I mean, for inc incidentally, like, should I put gravity back in? I need like some kind of dampening. I need it to like sort of hold itself up. I kind of have an idea. And uh, I should mention that a lot of this is coming from that skittish coming, uh, in case this gets edited later, I'll say, a lot of my ideas are inspired by a project uh, by Martin Bravo called Skittish Tree that um, he worked on while he was a student here at ITP where I teach. Um, and, I'm, and if I recall correctly, one of the things he did with that project was connect some of the endpoints uh, to the top with springs to hold up the tree, <laughs> but not draw those springs. So that's something I could try. Um, you could try and limit the rotation of the joints. Put ne Oh, negative gravity is such a smart idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I love this idea. Let's try that. So let's put the gravity behavior in for a second and just see what happens. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Look at that tree falling down. All right, let's... Um, this is, by the way, whoever sent a thousand people here, <laughs> maybe now is a good time to send them. Because <laughs> I think this is kind of the interesting part to try to get this tree to do something. Let's make the gravity much weaker um, and go in the opposite direction. Okay. Ah, look at that. So this is actually, in a way, already what I sort of wanted to see. The tree is kind of almost like swaying in the wind just by the nature of the spring forces and this sort of force that's pushing up. One thing that I think would be really effective here is that you can add, just like there's a global gravity behavior, you can add an attraction behavior to the particles, meaning they can attract each other, and if you add a negative one, they can repel each other. So if all the particles have a slight repulsion force, then it won't allow them to get too close to each other. So let me try adding that. So when I create a particle, a branch, and, and possibly would make sense for me to, in many ways, to lock both of these. I mean, what am I making? Is it a tree? Like that's now, like the, the trunk is like really locked in place. I don't know if that's a meaningful improvement. But let me try um, adding, let me try adding this attraction behavior. So if I go to the branch object, and by the way, this jitter thing is not being used. Let's take that out. The branch is where I create the spring out of these two verlet particles. So I think I could also say let re repulsion equals new attraction behavior. I honestly have no idea. Just speculating. New vet no. Oh, and I think I just give it a strength. Yeah, wait, let me look this up. Let me go back to the documentation and let me try to find um, let me go to um, where's the physics one? I'm in core. Okay, good. I want to go into Verlet physics. Attraction behavior. Oh, I give it the, oh, I give it the particle. I don't add the behavior. I, um, hmm, jitter, there's so many things. There's a jitter parameter. Radius and strength, okay. I think what I do is I create a new attraction behavior. I put it on the particle, like this dot begin. I give it a radius, let's just say like, 40, and a strength, negative 1. Uh, so let's, let's say repulsion 1 and repulsion 2 is on the end. Now do I have to add those? I must say physics.add behavior, right? Ah. 
Repulsion one, repulsion two. Let's see if this does what I think it's going to do. Ugh. So it definitely does what I think it's going to do, but it's a little bit nuts. And actually, the repulsion behavior, the radius and maybe strength, should be dependent on um, its, its level in the tree, right? So if we think about this fractal tree for a second, and this doesn't need to be here. If I were to draw what I'm doing, right? Particle, 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 particle. And I connect all these lines. This is, I messed something up. Weird. Uh, what did I just do here? Well, this is what I meant to do. This is basically what I've got. So the, each one of these particles has a sort of cone of repulsion. And you can see that cone, or that's not really a cone, it's a circle, a circle of repulsion, should probably be smaller as it's getting further up the tree so that it sort of keeps its structure. I mean, again, this has nothing to do with actual trees. I'm just messing around with springs and particles and having some fun. But at least for the idea that I'm having to create this sort of like simulated physics tree swaying in the wind, I haven't even added any wind, like some pearly noise or something. Um, this, this, I think, would be a way uh, uh, to start. So if I come back to this, this is the variable that I'm talking about. So I, do, I know about this distance. So what if I just used that literal distance? Like, I probably should use maybe like half the distance because it's a radius. Let's say half the distance. Oh, it's acting a little bit crazy. So I think this, <laughs> yeah, skittish tree. <laughs> so it's not maintaining its structure, but it is kind of this crazy, creepy, crawly thing that I kind of love. I think also the strength is kind of, uh, meaningful here, like I could make it much weaker. Um, the, interestingly enough, the gravity is now so strong um, that what if I actually take out, what if I don't have that negative gravity behavior? Like this is just the tree, and this is actually, in many ways, I'm creating an example of a force-directed graph. Alec Moth is suggesting only put the repulsion force on the last particle, on the end. Oh, that's interesting. Right, that's a meaningful idea I'm adding. That's, yes, that's actually a very important idea. I think I'm duplicating because the end becomes the beginning of the next one. I should only do one repulsion force. That is a very good point. Yeah, so this is more logical, sort of, whatever logic is assigned here. Um, what if I make it even weaker? What if I make these springs stronger? Yeah, this, this part here is really the issue. Like the branches start to like cross over. Strength of the branch should scale further out from the first branch should be, ah, yes. So that's also true. Like, I should this spring force, like, let's just say I make the spring force a one. Does that make it completely, what's the word, inelastic or elastic? I'm going to remember which is which. But as if it's a metal rod there, it can't be springy. So there's still, the repulsion is an issue. I mean, issue, bug, or feature? <laughs> Some might say feature there. But the strength, um, and I could also do... Like I could say, make it like a quarter the radius. Yeah. So this is kind of interesting. So now, what if I were to say, um, let me make that, oh, the spring force or the repulsion force? 
strength of the branch should scale. Further out from the first branch, the weaker it should be. The strength of the spring force or the repulsion force. I could try either of those. I kind of liked it when it was crazier, to be perfectly honest. Um, I really like this idea of holding the tree up, actually, and then putting the gravity down. Because, for example, let's just put the gravity down again. Oh, I'm not. Oops, that's the wrong. It's not a repulsion force. It's an attraction force. Sorry. Um, made it very weak. Oh, oh no, right. Um, I always forget. The gravity is here. If I put the gravity pointing down again, the whole tree falls. What if I every single very, very last endpoint, the last endpoints, so for example, where do I, how do I find those? So when n is 6, right, if, n, let me just see if n equals 6, if n equals 5, that's the last one, right? Um, let me just create a, create a holder. at the top. I'm going to take the branches into separate variables. And I'm going to make a spring. Um, let's spring equals new a holder and a with a rest length of ugh, a rest length of that distance, and a strength of 1. Um, and I want not a, a dot end. And let's do that twice. And whoops, where did I just go there? And let's say, oh, what am I doing? I just need a little bit more room for my code. Um, physics, add spring. This is a ridiculous idea. Uh, intermediate value is not a constructor. Whoa, what is going on here? Hmm. Whoa. I want. I guess I should probably draw these springs. Um. You could apply forces using your forward kinematics code. Feels like that API is weird. It should default to the distance between the two points given its rest length. These are very good ideas. Um, I think I might leave this as an exercise to the viewer. 
when n is 5, if it makes two new branches, make a spring between holder and the end, and holder is like this weird, oh, but they have mm, arbitrary particle that I stuck, oh, oh, I forgot to lock it in place, I wonder. See? <laughs> now, if only I could draw what it's doing. <laughs> so I think what would make more sense is for me to, this is, I mean, this is getting really ridiculous, <laughs> is to like have it hold itself up from not the width, but the end x point. So like, it's like there's like, I'm building a little marionette. I should really draw all these. Um, and then, this is terrible. I will refact in this later, you know. Pretty sure this is now going to have each of them, just to diagram what I'm doing. It really helped for me to draw. What I'm doing is, if this is the top, I'm putting something like right here <laughs> that you don't see that like holds them all. <laughs> so I'm going to like hold the tree up, which is kind of ridiculous. Holder is not defined. Holder one, holder one, holder two, holder two, holder two, holder two. Holder is not defined. <laughs> holder one, holder one, holder two. You should make the springs weaker so that they aren't metal rods. Oh, maybe. Good point. Oh, there's like the minimum and maximum. I forgot about that. <laughs> there, I'm holding the tree up. Do I even have the gravity pulling it down? No, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was going for. <laughs> Let's just, I'm curious what happens when these holder springs are weaker. Mm. Really, it doesn't make sense. Like they should be like, it would be a much more, a much better way of doing this would be to kind of like attach them more like this, I think. Some sort of like radial pattern, probably. <laughs> but that was an interesting experiment. But I think I'm going to go back, comment this out. Oops. I'm going to go back to the version that I have with uh, negative gravity, a um, repulsion force that is a factor, the radius is a factor of the distance, the length of the branch, and the strength is in the negative direction, and um, the spring force is much springier, and let's see what we get here. Yeah. So this I like. <laughs> this brings me happiness. Now let's try to add, I'm just curious, uh, let's add some, is there a way to add dampening? There must be, a, I know there's, there's the constraint function, which would be good. Is there a dampening thing? Like, um, particle behavior? What are these? Constraint, oh. There's all these constraint things. There's minimum distance springs. That's probably something I should be using. Um, there's constraints. I'm getting, I'm kind of, kind of tired. <laughs> it's been a, long, been a long time here. Oh, what Simon, somebody says, oh, that's good. Attach them to their initial position with zero length springs. Oh, fascinating idea. 
Whoa, I like that idea. Add horizontal force proportional to the distance from the center of the screen. Yeah. So many things I could try here. <laughs> I like, you, you should all try these ideas. Maybe we can make a list of these ideas to talk about at the end. I think I just want to make this kind of go crazy because I need to wrap this up. Um, but you, you're getting to see the challenge here. So I want to, what I wanted to at least do is, I wanted to see if I could put some dampening. I mean, I know how to do this manually. Um, does toxic libs have inherent dampening? From three months ago! I did not expect to see a forum post from three months ago. This does not have an answer. Can I log in? Can I reply to this? Oh, this is the old forum. So it's not from three months ago. Sorry, this is from a very long time ago. This is the archive of the old for forum. So I can't reply to that. Oh, look, the nature of code.com. Maybe if I read that book, it'll explain it to me. <laughs> that would be nice. Lesson five, default friction or dampening. Um, Yeah. Jay Myron, wow, I remember that library. This is from 2013, this discussion. Really like blast from the past here. Um, what about friction? No, no friction. <laughs> Ah, maybe if I watch this YouTube tutorial from 2015, it'll explain it to me. All right, I'm going to give up on that. I mean, I could, um, I could calculate a dampening force. Um, it's the angle which is what should be spring. That's a very good point. I have to stop here and offer suggestions for the community to do more fun stuff. So a couple things. Let me, I, I'm actually pretty happy with what this is doing. Uh, it's not a realistic tree, but it's sort of pleasant and interesting. I, I bet you if you kind of were thoughtful about how you draw this, you might create some kind of like alien plant life creature. It almost feels like more underwater-ish. Um, like this is like an underwater plant. Um, so let me try to add a few more things to this. Number one is let me at least add it so that the branches are thicker um, at the bottom and thinner at the top. So that could be done by, I could add a level uh, variable here. And this would have been useful for a lot of other things. Um, and every time I make a branch, um, I give it its level. So the root is level zero. And A, branch A, branch B, actually, I could just give it the N here. Um, but I think I'll have the branch the, it, uh, calculate the next level itself. So the branch, when it makes a new branch right here, should say this dot level plus one. And also right here, this dot level plus one. Now when I draw it, I can say stroke weight and um, um, let's just, let me just say level for a second so that you see this is going to work in the wrong way. Oh, this dot level. This dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, sorry. Right? So now we see it's thicker towards the top, which is actually more like bleh, underwater creature plant like, which I also quite enjoy. Um, <clears throat> but let's invert it. So let's map this dot. So let's say um, total levels equals six right now, which goes here. Um, and then let's map this dot level, which goes from zero to total levels. And the stroke, let's have the stroke weight go from 12 down to one. 
And I'm missing a parenthesis somewhere. Oh, I need another parenthesis here. Ooh, that is nice. Okay, so already I'm enjoying this quite a bit more. Oh, I like this. It's kind of creepy. Ooh, could I, maybe 12 to one is like too much. And it probably should have an exponential or logarithmic, some other scale. It's linear right now, but let's do like eight. Yeah, so it's a little less extreme. And also, let's try, let's have like, let's just push it to, let's push it to 11. We made 11. This goes to 11. This fractal tree. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody stop the chat. Spectral Piano is giving me a good suggestion, but here we go. It's nice, but it's not. It, can it not calculate the physics? Oh. Very, oh, um, it's kind of like almost pi. So too many levels, too many levels, Mozart. Let's try 10. Still too slow. Nine. Yeah, we're getting 30 frames per second now with nine. So what was that? Um, scale velocity. Yeah, so I could dampen the velocity of each particle. That's a small idea. My, my brain, I'm, I'm not, the words coming out of my mouth make no sense. That's a good idea. <laughs> um, also, I think that radius is getting way too small now. I want the radius to be bigger. So let's keep that radius bigger. Because I want them, I want more and I want the frame rate to be faster. So I'm going to put it at 8. There we go. So, OK, this is good. Uh, um, what was the logarithmic scale that someone suggested? I'm going to scroll back up in the chat. It wasn't that long ago. Um, where was it? Where was it? Scrolling, scrolling. Ah. I use, Spectral Priano writes, I use 16 divided by log level plus 2 for this thickness. So a logarithmic scale is an excellent idea here. Um, that's going to, um, I, I think, work nicely. And if, my brain, if I wasn't so brain dead, I would explain it. Where do I do the stroke weight? Here it is. Stroke weight equals 16 divided equals 16 divided by log of this dot level plus 2. I don't want that to be 0. Um, and let's see how this goes. Let's try logarithmic scale. Um, let's yeah, I like this. It's nice. And I think I could even kind of go down, yeah. So that's really nice. It's a, I, I like the scale of this. Um, all right, so we're getting our trees. I'm surprised that it doesn't fan out more. Um, and I, I think it would make sense to have plus one here. Whoa, what happened to that? Oh, plus two, because I have a zero level. That makes sense. Um, OK. Color. So many things that could happen here. Maybe increase the strength of the repulsion force, says Simon. Excellent idea. Because guess what? I want it to go a little crazier. There we go. <laughs> oh, look at my tree. There you go. Yes. Dance, tree, dance. Oh, I could have it respond to sound. Really cool idea to have it respond to sound. It looks like it's responding to sound. That's what's the craziest thing. But let me just do one more thing. And by one more thing, I mean like probably 10 more things. Um, but let me add uh, some wind into the system. So I only get one gravity behavior. Do I even, does this even really matter? Let's take out the gravity behavior for a second. I 
think what I could do, I have an idea. So without the gravity behavior, it's, um, it's not sort of standing up as consistently. <laughs> this is very weird. It's also a little, I feel like I shouldn't lock the second particle. Like it's weird that that, with this whole thing, that really doesn't make sense. So let's not lock the second particle anymore. Can I, just out of curiosity, if I make a global variable called GB for gravity behavior, and I, oh, and I say GB is that gravity behavior, and I adjust its values, like if I say a function mouse pressed, gb.x equals zero, gb.y equals zero. When I click the mouse, does that disable the gravity? Oh, I forgot that I have that thing <laughs> where I also can like drag one of them around. I can't tell, I think it did disable the gravity, but it's too hard to tell. Let's take this out. I don't think it disabled the gravity. I think the gravity's still there. I wanted to like just adjust that behavior over time. Oh, I don't have the chat. I'm still looking at the logarithmic scale thing in the chat. The spring should go from B to the A of the previous branch. I think I'm doing that by definition of the way that I'm creating the springs. Um, the end branches definitely get tangled, which is kind of interesting. Look at that. Um, how do I, hold on, let's be sure about this. Wait, hold on, console log gb. Oh, force, oh there we go, scaled force. There's a force and a scaled force. Maybe I can, yeah, x and y don't do anything. What if I were to say, I forgot that I'm in JavaScript because I just look at the objects. Maybe I need to affect the scaled force. I mean, I'm probably not supposed to do this. What's it called? Scaled force. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so I don't think this is the proper way to um, affect the behavior, but it'll work for right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's always have the gravity's scaled force y. Y is never gonna change, but I'm gonna make the x, and I probably should use open simplex noise and refer to my other videos about open simplex noise. That's when it flies in later. During the, when this never gets edited. This is very much like the neuroevolution cars. The feeling is this is never going to get edited. Um, noise. Let x offset equal zero, x offset plus equal 0 0.02, noise x offset, and we're going to map that value which goes between zero and one to between negative two and two. So let's just see what happens here if there's this, so the gravity, this global force, which is really not gravity, but it's just a force always pointing up that's also gonna go left and right from time to time. Let's see what happens. <laughs> it's a little bit too strong. <laughs> You can imagine a, an interaction where like I blow into the microphone and it does that. Ooh, this is kind of crazy. I love this. I really like this project. Let's go from like 0.1 to 0 0.1. Yeah, so there we go. Here is my tree swaying in the wind with physics. Uh, <laughs> Um, let's go back, let's just tune this a little bit. I think these are way too strong. Let's make the it half as strong. 
Um, let's let the springs be much looser. I think this is going to be nicer. There we go. There we go. Oh. Let's, let's have a couple more little tuning things. Let's make this even weaker and let's change it less often. And let's have the gravity force actually be, well, let's, we can set it here. Let's set the Y. Oh, we could also make this could be noisy as well. I have an idea. Uh, we'll just take a different, we'll still go from like a different place in the noise space so it's different values. And we'll map that, which goes between 0 and 1, which is silly. I could just, um, we could just take that noise value. I don't need map for this because I want it to just go always negative and, but have it be kind of uh, weak. So sometimes it'll kind of go, uh, it'll go down to 0. Let's try this. Whoops. Scaled force. All right. I think I have finished this project. Yes, an Okagana thing. How about a spring to each joint which pulls them back to its original location? Great idea. Do you have some relaxing music here? No? No? <laughs> it's kind of appropriate. There we go. This is what I meant. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's make this. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna give. We're gonna do some relaxing tree fundraising here. Um, how do I do that thing where they're... <laughs> okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Just hold on for a second. Everybody, take a minute, bring everybody from the internet here. We are going to enjoy some nice relaxing music and a physics tree. <laughs>
You don't like my default music from YouTube <laughs> free library that it's like somehow I have over here? Um, yeah. First of all, it doesn't respond to the music. So I really think it should. Um, oh, I have not gone. Edwards asked me if I'd check out this exhibit yet. I really have got to. Um, I really should. Can you share the code, please? So I definitely will share the code. Um, I suppose I could right now um, create a repo really quickly, um, but I don't know that I'm ready. To, you know, we, this, this makes sense for it to be a community project. Um, you could create springs between the particles on the same level to keep the branches separate. That is such a good idea. So there's so many good ideas being uh, suggested. And what I would like to say, I mean, I, I, I've hit three hours now, and I think that's about my um, limit. But I would encourage you to, um, um, to create your own version of this. Um, I will, before I leave, I'll upload the code somewhere so you could build off of it. And um, uh, remove the bounding box, yeah. The bounding box is sort of unnecessary here. So let's do a few last things. How do I, let's do a few last things. The bounding box is very unnecessary. We should let, let the tree be free. Fly tree, fly. Like the wind, like the purlin noise, not really wind. It would be so easy to listen to the microphone. So I got rid of the sound library. How do I get out of this full screen? Um, Um, let's get the sound library back. This is my fancy technique. Um. <laughs> oh, shoot, did I get it? I'm the worst. <laughs> I've completely lost my mind. I'm like so brain dead. It's been a long week. Is that the sound library? Excellent. Uh, I think I just say, uh, I can just make a variable called Mike. And then I can say let Mike equals P5 audio in. And then can I just get the, like the level? I think there's more to it than this. It can't be this simple. Ooh, whoops. And it should be new P5 audio in. Um, all right, that's not how it works. Oh, mic.start. Close. I am definitely listening. So let's go look at the um, examples. Oh, I'm in. Uh, I want to look at uh, examples. Sound, sound, mic threshold. Input start. Get level. New P5 audio and oh, you know what it might be. Um, Let's try uh, listening on mouse pressed. Oh, wait a sec. I have a feeling that the audio input is like tied to something else. Sound, input, no, it's the built-in microphone. Can in fact work. Input new P5 audio in. Input get level. Huh. What did I do wrong? Uh, 
What am I missing? What am I missing? Weird. <laughs> Make mic global. I did. I mean, I was not putting the mic.start in setup because there's the weird issue. Well, hold on. Let's try this. There's a weird thing with Chrome um, um, where it doesn't want to let you listen without user interaction. So that's why I was putting it in mouse pressed, just to kind of get around that. Um, and then I could say, like, if mic I'm, I'm a, no, but it works here. Watch me delete all my code and lose it all. <laughs> How confident am I? Okay, hold on. Put this in another file. Now this is just that example. Weird. Okay, good. So something is going on where it's not working. Let me let me show the warnings. I have the warnings filtered out. How do I where do filter settings? Custom levels, there it is. Right, this is what I was worried about. Audio context was not allowed to start. So that's why I was here going to say, So it's not working in for an audio stream, you know. Huh. Well. That's good to it's definitely something to do with um Oops. How do I see the um How do I look at the JavaScript console in Firefox? <laughs> I've completely run out of steam. I don't know why I decided to try to do this. Oh, allow. There we go. You usually would ask me to allow. It's, um, Preferences, developer, web developer. Web console. 
There we go. I'm getting some values. Whoops, no, no, no. How do I make this bigger? Well, um, all right, so now what I was going to do is get the volume and then have this kind of be tied to that. Because it's definitely going to be exactly what I wanted to do. back. <sighs> oh, interesting. Something is going weird with the audio stream. All right. I'm going to take this out. This didn't happen. I'm, I'm done. I have to go home. I can't be here anymore. Close this. Close this. Uh, volume is not defined. What did I have that as? I forgot what I had. This is never getting edited into some kind of like 30 minute coding challenge. But in the off chance to, that it does, I will record a little end and I will just consider this my prompt to you from the live stream. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for watching this coding challenge. Um, that was a, a bit of a mess, but I ended up making this strange wiggly sea creature. Um, hopefully you learned something about the way that a uh, fractal works, object-oriented programming works, and physics libraries work. I guess I would open it up to you, or what are some ways that you could actually make this feel much more tree-like in terms of giving it a much more stable structure, or perhaps go in the opposite direction and make it even more frenetic, or feel more creature or seaweed or underwater-like. Maybe it could respond to some kind of interaction like sound. You could do so much more with color, you, you could change the way you're drawing the tree or the design of the branches. So many possibilities. If, me, if you make your own wiggly, wobbly, tr fractal tree with physics, uh, please share it with me at thecodingdrain.com on the page associated with this coding challenge, and I will see you in future videos. And I would love, um, yeah. <laughs> share it with me, and I will see you next time on The Coding Train. I had 0.5, not 0.2. OK. Uh, try recording an intro. OK, Simon. Good point. What you're about to watch. OK. Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge. What you're about to watch is an edited down version of what I spent well over two hours programming, which is this. Um, this is for the uh, YouTube fundraiser uh, Team Trees. Um, go to teamtrees.org to donate or use the donate button that's associated with this video. I really set out to try to make a tree swaying in the wind, and I ended up with this crazy, like, flying around that's completely gone now. <laughs> sea creature, more like, or I don't know what it is. Here it comes back. Hi, tree, just spinning around in circles. And so, um, 
I'm going to show you just about all the pieces of the code that I wrote to do this with a lot of the debugging and extra tangents cut out. Of course, you could always back, go back and watch the full live stream. Um, but please, um, maybe you could make a version of this that's a little less insane or that's more insane and share it with me at thecodingtrain.com. Um, plant a tree. Every dollar goes to planting a tree. I'm too brain dead to make this uh, uh, opener. Let me just uh, let me just look here at team trees. Okay. Any donations that you make through the, from this video, any donations that you make either at teamtrees.org or the YouTube donate button or Arbor Day's Team Trees. No, I'm not gonna forget about Facebook. <laughs> Any donations you make, either going by going directly to teamtrees.org or with the donate button that you see with this video, are sent directly to the Arbor Day Foundation to fund tree planting. One dollar plants, one tree. Um, you can read more about the Team Trees fundraiser by, uh, um, by checking out the links in this video's description. So enjoy this insanity of me attempting to make a tree and ending up with this, my friend, my wiggly, wiggly friend, and I will see you. Uh, at the end, where I come back and try to summarize this very poorly, probably. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, I'm going to try to, I, um, you know, this will, the, the fundraiser are probably going on for a while. But, um, and I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done for today. Uh, choo-choo, I press the choo-choo button. I play my... Um, little out drum music and see if there are just a few questions that I could answer before I go. I just want to check my messages for a second. No. So I'm very much, ho I have a bunch of videos that I've recorded that are in the hopper, so to speak, that I haven't released yet. So those I will be, so stay tuned. There's obviously edited stuff that's come from previous live streams, but there are some new, con there is some new content coming out, in particular a set of videos that are coming out on November 6th um, that you won't have seen in the live stream. Uh, oui, je parle le français. Est-ce que tu parles le français? Voulez-vous, uh, vous, vous parlez le français? Ma, ma, fra ma français est terrible. <laughs> but un peu, un peu de français. Can I do a dance? <laughs> Background is overpowering my French. Let me turn that down. Sorry that it's so loud. Couldn't you have used apply force just like with the snow with a random single direction wind? Yes, I could have. I don't know why, I got stuck on like just give everything the same force. Um, what's your... All right. Thanks, everybody. I see some interesting comments. Lonnie writes, I've been blocked. Hmm. I don't... Blocked? Like, on... Is it... Can you block people on YouTube? I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Uh, but I will... I can check into that. Cringe. Yes. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, what's your favorite thing besides teaching? Um... Yeah, no, I'm seeing comments, so I don't think you're blocked. Um, my favorite thing besides teaching, hanging out. This is guys. I only have cheesy answers to that. Like, um, I no, I'm not French. Um, this song is much longer than I remember. 
I would have just passed a few sine waves for the tree points. These are all really good ideas, none of which did I try. Yes, go to sleep. Jory, go to sleep. I'm leaving to go to sleep in just a minute here. Um, I'll play you out with a this dot song. Um, how fast do you need to drive, cycle, fly to catch the game? What time does the game start? What time is it now? Oh, I can get home. I actually can get home within 20 minutes from here. Um, so yeah, I'll be able to catch that World Series game. Um, okay, thank you all. I don't know. Sometimes I end these streams and think that all my time and energy is going into the right place. <laughs> Sometimes I think, what, what, what's become of me? Um, but I, I hope I'm. Oh, oh, let me upload this code. So I don't. I don't have a point of view right now as to, I mean, um, in, and I, I will, um, Violet, who is helping me manage a lot of the um, GitHub repos, w um, we can put our heads together and think about this, and there's many other uh, members and patrons who do a lot of this work as well. But let me just at least put the code somewhere that you could see um, by making a new repo. Because I do like the idea of having a community Team Trees project. You know, one idea that I had, which I did that lo those like cloud designs a bunch of years ago for Processing Community Day, and everybody could make a cloud design, and then oh, we could make a forest of 20 million coding trained trees. Oh, there's some interesting ideas here. But let me just do this right now. Uh, code from uh, Team Trees live stream. So at a minimum, I'm just going to make a readme that the code from today will be here on YouTube. <laughs> GitHub. And this can be like, so much more needs to be here to make it a thoughtful, usable thing, but um, adding code from today. But at least for those of you who want to try to start to work with what I did, um, you can grab it from here right now at uh, GitHub slash coding train team trees. Git tube. All right, bye everybody. I'm going to switch you over to um, the team trees logo. You can still hear me. I'm going to play you out with the Perlin noise song. So this is random, this is noise, Perlin noise that is, in the core random algorithm, the actual random algorithm itself, those numbers aren't related at all. You pick, like, I'm picking random numbers between 0 and 10. 9, 2, 7, 6, 1, 9, 4, 8, 9, 2, 1, 3. I pick 9 a lot, apparently. But with Perlin noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six. Boy, this is like pearl and noise performance art. Nine, two, seven, six, one, nine, four, eight, nine, two, one, three. I think nine, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four. Boy, this is like pearl and noise performance art. Curly noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five. Curly noise, that is. Curly noise. So this is curly noise, that is. Curly noise. This is this is curly noise, that is. Curly noise. So this is curly noise, that is. Curly curly noise. Curly curly noise, that is. Curly noise. So this is curly noise, that is. Curly noise. This is this is curly noise, that is. Curly noise. So this is curly noise, that is. Curly curly noise. Curly curly noise, that is. Curly noise. This is curly noise, that is. Curly noise. This is curly noise. But with Perlin noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five. Boy, this is like Perlin noise performance art. Goodbye, everybody. Choo-choo.